All right, so graphing sine and cosine. Um, we're going to look at the unit circle because both of these graphs come from the unit circle. Okay, um, they're called periodic functions. So <clears throat> a periodic function is a function that returns to the same value at regular intervals. So here's some examples of periodic functions. Because, like, let's look at this first one. So here, let's say that this is our starting point. Well, we can just go along this. We end right back at that starting point right there. And then it starts again. And then it's going to do it again. And then it's going to do it again. And then again. And again. And it's literally just going to go forever. Whoops. In both directions. Okay. It's going to go forever this way. It's going to go forever this way. Okay. Same thing here. So there's one, two, three. That's just going to continue like this. Okay, for this one, same thing. It's not as pretty, but it's still just making the same shape over and over and over again. Okay, so a periodic function is a function that returns back to the same point over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. That's how all these trig functions are. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out what sine and cosine would be from the unit circle. So remember, sine is your x values. Cosine is your y values. So if we looked at all the x values here, before I click on that, so all the x values here, we have <clears throat> 1, then we have square root of 3 over 2, and square root of 2 over 2, 1 half, 0, blah, 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 and just continues. Okay, if I was to graph all of those points, like 1, so 1 starts here, and then square root of 3 over 2, that's like, let me grab my calculator, so square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2 is 0.86, so that'd be like about right there. Square root of 2 over 2 is 0.77, and then 1 half, and then 0, and then negative 1 half, and then square root of 2 over 2, and blah, blah, blah. It just keeps going like this, and then we're going to end up back here. And then if we went around the circle again, it would do it again, and again, and again, and again. Okay, and it will do the same with the sine graph. Except for sine, we would be looking at all of our y values. Okay, sorry, that's kind of messy. Like, you don't need to copy that. Um, let's click on this link real quick. So here, and this kind of will show us what's going on here. So let's move this so it's on the origin. Okay, this is a unit circle that we have here. Uh, almost on the origin, right? Okay, close enough. Let's look at our sine graph first. So sine, remember, sine is your y values, right? So as I go along this graph, this is going to trace what those y values are. And then it goes down, it continues to trace this, and then continues. So that is our sine wave right there. Okay, kind of cool. And this would just continue this way. It would just go like this, and this would continue this way. Okay, <clears throat> cosine, let's do our cosine one. So cosine starts at 1 and then goes down to its low point because cosines are x values. So let's think about this. Right there, our x value is 1, right? Right here, our x value is 0, which makes sense that that's 0 right here. Right here, our x value is negative 1, which makes sense that it's the low point. Again, our x value here is 0, and then it's back to 1. Okay, if we look at the sine graph again, so sine is your y values. Well, right here, the y value is 0, which makes sense that that's at 0. Here, the y value is 1, so that makes sense it's at 1. Here, the y value is 0 again, so it's back at 0. And then this is at negative 1, and then back to 0. Cool? Um, I've linked this on your Canvas page so that you can see it. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. <clears throat> so that's where it comes from, but let's see how do we actually graph it. So here is our graph of sine. Some characteristics of this. If we look at this, the first, last, and middle point are the same. And when I say first, last, and middle, I'm just looking at one sine wave. So I'm just looking at this portion. So first, last, middle, they're all on the same line right there. Um, the first point, the halfway between the first and the middle point is a high point right there. And then halfway between the middle and last point is a low point. And the period's 2 pi, and this just repeats forever. Okay? 
So here, first, last, and middle are the same. You go up the amplitude and you go down the amplitude. That is something to remember. That is something I would write down. So important concepts here. This you definitely need to write down. If you printed out the notes, this is on the notes. But um, y equals a sine of b theta plus c. The amplitude here is a. The period is 2 pi over b. And the vertical shift is c. Okay, and let's get into actually graphing these. Like, what does that mean? So in this case, my a value is 3 and my b value is 2. Okay, because a is always in front of sine, so that's the 3. B is always in front of theta, so that's the 2. So that means my amplitude is 3. The period is 2 pi over B, so 2 pi over 2, which those 2's cancel, just leaving me with pi. And there's no vertical shift here because we didn't have a value there. Okay, so first, last, middle are the same. So I'm going to go, um, no vertical shift. First, the last point, the period is the last point. So I'm just going to go to pi, there's my last point. And then the middle point's the same. Then I can go up my amplitude and down my amplitude. And that's one cycle right there. And then this just repeats for the rest of the graph. And there is your graph. And one thing, this should not, when you draw this, it shouldn't be like this. Okay, these are smooth curves. They should be curvy. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do another one. So 2 sine of 4 theta plus 4. So A equals 2, B equals 4, and C also equals 4. So that means the amplitude is 2. The period is 2 pi over 4, which 2 over 4 reduces to pi over 2. And then the vertical shift is up 4, because that plus 4 means you go up 4. So if we're going to go up 4, I'm just going to draw that to um, denote my vertical shift. Okay. Now... <clears throat> First, last, middle are the same. So the first point is right there at that vertical shift. Last point is at pi halves. Middle point right there. <coughs> then go up the amplitude and go down the amplitude, which the amplitude here is 2, so I'm going to go up 2, down 2. And then this just repeats along the rest of this graph. Okay. This one, so if it's ever written like this, you can rewrite that as 4 sine of 1 fourth theta minus 3. Okay, so I would rewrite that, which now it's easy to see that B is 1 fourth. So A is 4, B is 1 fourth, C is negative 3. So that means the amplitude is 4. The period is 2 pi over a fourth, which one way to think of this is 1 fourth goes into 2 how many times? So let's try and visualize this. So we're trying to do 2 divided by 1 fourth. We're just going to ignore the pi for a second. So this is the same thing as saying, how many times does 1 fourth go into 2? Well, let's draw it. So here's two circles. Let's just say they're pi's or something. If I break these into fourths, that means 1 fourth goes in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. So this is the same thing as 8 pi. Okay, mathematically, the way you would do that is if we did 2 over 1 fourth, that's the same thing as 2 divided by a fourth, which when you divide by a fourth, you flip and multiply, so that's 2 times 4 over 1, which is 8. Okay, so here, that's 8 pi. Then the vertical shift is down 3. So I'm going to move down 3, that's where I start from. First, last, middle are the same. So the first point's there, last point is at 8 pi, middle point's at 4 pi. We go up the amplitude, and we go down the amplitude. And then this just repeats, and there is our wave. Okay. Um, math puns are the first sign of madness, or insanity, or whatever you want to say. I literally have a shirt that says that. That's kind of slightly... Embarrassing. <laughs> High school Miss Gagan never thought that, like, I was going to be a math teacher, to be honest. So it's kind of funny to see how my life played out. And now I'm here teaching online. So life's weird. Okay. Um, let's graph cosine. So notice that these graphs look way similar. Though they're different colors, which, okay, that's a difference. But, um... Really, cosine is just like shifted sine, right? We've just like shifted it to look like that. 
Um, which is why it's called sine and cosine. These are co-functions. Okay, you can get cosine by just shifting sine. Um, ba -ba -ba. I'm a bit worried about Mike's obsession with the difference between sine and cosine. Um, don't worry, it's just a phase. <laughs> so basically, all that's saying is that you just shift this um, to get it. So that's really the only difference. Okay, so here, the characteristics, you start high, you end high. The middle point is a low point. Period is 2 pi, and this repeats forever. I had a student a couple years ago. I kept drawing it like this because I was only drawing one cycle. And they were like, oh, that looks like ovaries. We're learning that in Acker's class right now. So if you want to remember like it looks like ovaries, then remember it that way, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, cool. <laughs> so next... So we have y equals a cosine b theta plus c, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> this is the exact same as sine. So amplitude is the same, period is the same, vertical shift is the same. We just graph it a little bit differently. Okay, so start high, end high, middle point is the low point. That's the biggest thing I would write down here. And let's actually graph this. So we have 2 cos of 2 theta. So a is 2, b is 2, which means that the amplitude here is 2. The period is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. And there's no vertical shift. So I'm going to start high, end high. When I say start high, you start up at your amplitude. So I'm going to start there at 2. And I'm going to end high, so I'm going to end at 2, but at pi. The middle point's the low point, so instead of going up 2, I go down 2. And then that just repeats. Okay. 3 cosine of 4 theta plus 2, so A is 3, B is 4, C is 2. So my amplitude here is 3. My period is 2 pi over 4, which reduces to pi over 2. And C is the vertical shift, so that moves it up 2. <clears throat> okay. Now I move up 2. There's that. Start high, end high. So I'm going to go from my vertical shift up 3. So there's my starting point. End high, so I'm going to go to pi halves, and there's that high point. And then instead of going up 3 for the low point, I obviously go down 3. So that would be down 3 right there. And it's down 3 from the shift. Okay, that's why we do the shift first, so that we can just move it from there. And then this just repeats along here. And there's our graph. And remember, again, just with sine, just like with sine, this is these aren't like sharp curves. Okay, these are smooth curves. Okay. Let's look at this. So four cosine of theta over three minus one. So this is four cosine of one third theta minus one. So a is four, b is a third, c is negative one. So here amplitude is four. Period is 2 pi divided by a third. So we're trying to see how many times does 1 third go into 2 pi, or go into 2. So if I have 2 and I break these into thirds, well, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. So it would be 6 pi. <clears throat> okay. And then the vertical shift is down 1. So if I go down 1, that's where I'm starting from. The amplitude is 4, so I'm going to go up 4. Go to 6 pi, up 4. The middle point's the low point, so I'm going to go down 4 right there. This just repeats, and there is that graph. Um, why didn't the mathematician... I don't know what was going on when I made this video. Like, or this... I make the um, PowerPoint before I make the videos, and sometimes I get weird. Like, there's, like, little dinosaurs in this and stuff. There's an alien at the beginning, like... Aliens are dope, but um, why doesn't the mathematician go to the beach? Because he knows he only needs sine and cosine to get tangent because sine over cosine equals tangent, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Please reach out if you need help. I put some other links that you can click to that will kind of help you also if this video wasn't enough. Okay. Miss you guys. Hope all is well. Bye. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>